SMS TV News are reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, the Confluence State of Nigeria. I am Sherry Fatonuno Mohammed. The headlines National Assembly passes bill seeking witness protection in criminal prosecution. EFCC arrests Accountant General of the Federation over 80 billion naira fraud. Spain, Morocco reopen land borders after two year closure. And Man United to offer Osime 75 million naira weekly pay. Now the news in detail. The National Assembly has passed a bill seeking to protect witnesses in criminal prosecution by changing their identities keeping them in federal government custody and paying them. The Witness Protection and Management Bill 2022 will allow the prosecuting agency to alter the birth, death and marriage record to conceal the identity and protect a witness, especially at the court. During the proceedings, the witness will bear a new name and other identities. The Senate passed the bill on March 30, 2022, while the House passed it on May 7, 2022. The proposal is awaiting assent by the President, Muhammad Buhari. The Witness Protection and Management Bill seeks to establish a witness protection and management program that would take such action as may be necessary and reasonable to provide for the safety and welfare of witnesses who provide information, evidence or any form of assistance to the relevant agency. The actions would include physical and armed protection, making necessary arrangements to allow the witness establish a new identity, relocating the witness, providing accommodation for the witness, providing logistics for transporting the property of the witness, and providing reasonable financial assistance to the witness. Other measures include permitting a person involved in the administration of the program to use and assume name in carrying out his duties and have proper documentation supporting the assumed name. The Lagos state government has tagged Lagos ferry services to ensure the deployment and application of the latest technology in all areas of its operation to improve water transportation systems and impact positively on the economy of the state. The charge was given by the team leader of Software Web Development, Lagos State Ministry of Science and Technology, Wasil Jimo, during Lag Ferry Management Retreat with the team, Innovating Water Transportation for a 21st Century Economy, held at the Administrative Staff College of Nigeria, Badagri. A statement by the state government on Monday quoted Jimo as saying, there is an urgent need to take an inventory of our existing technology deployments and work towards innovating new ideas to enhance service delivery in this critical and important sector of the economy. The team leader outlined key areas that would enhance the performance of Lag Ferry, such as the introduction of fully automated ticketing system using the best payment solution, acquisition of ferries that are energy efficient and monitored in real time, an efficient safety and rescue system employing the use of CCTV drones and unmanned water robots among others. On his part, the general manager, Lagos State Waterways Authority, Damilola Emmanuel, expressed confidence in the ability of Lag Ferry to achieve the state government's mandate of ferrying 30% of Lagosians via waterways and decongesting road traffic. Earlier in his welcome address by Deputy Director Lag Ferry, Akim Odushino, identified unwavering government support, teamwork, regular workshops, training and seminars as some of the reasons for the remarkable achievements recorded in the short period of operations. A firm, Mark Brooks Education, has said Nigerian students are hardworking, talented and demonstrated super B leadership skills. A statement signed by the organization in partnership with the UK government education said that a delegation of more than 20 principals and senior leaders would be visiting Nigeria to meet with parents, students, governments, ministers and business leaders at a UK boarding school exhibition. It added that the exhibition will take place on May 17, 2022 at the Transcorp Hills in Abuja and at Whitbaker Hotel Ikoi, Lagos on May 19, saying the UK's department supported the event for international trade and British High Commission in Abuja and British Deputy High Commission in Lagos. According to the statement, schools taking part in the delegation include SCS International Schools, Adenley College, Bedford School, Brove Groom School, Cardiff City Farm College, City of London Freeman School, Colford School, Eastcliff Headington School, Morton Hall, Mount Kelly, Rochester Independent College, Rosal School, St. Clair's Oxford, Taxis, the American School in England, Western Bath School, and Wycliffe College. A director at Anderson Education, Sarah Spalin, said, Choosing a school is one of the most important emotional and financial significant decisions parents will make for their children. Health is a human right, and it is government's responsibility to ensure that the right is realized. 
Over the past five years, Governor Yahya Bello has recorded huge successes in healthcare infrastructure delivery and increase in the health workforce. He placed high priority on the healthcare sector, which has manifested in the conceptualization of the idea of GYB model hospitals, which have gone a long way to curb medical tourism in the state. The key achievements of Governor Yahya Bello in the health sector includes establishment of a 300-bed world-class reference hospital in Okene, establishment of two new ultra-modern general hospitals in Egai, a Jaokuta local government area, and Gegu, Beki, Kogi local government area, establishment of teaching hospital complex, Prince Abubakar Audu University, Aingba, construction and furnishing of nutrition house for acceleration nutrition results in Nigeria, establishment of public health emergency operations center, built and equipped for the coordination of emergency outbreaks response in the Ministry of Health, establishment of confluence center for infectious diseases, establishment of the Kogi State Health Insurance Agency, about 332 primary health care centers across all wards in Kogi State have been revitalized and 21 model PHC established. Recruitment of 2,424 health professionals across the state to fill the manpower gap in the health sector. Revitalization of Confluence Advanced Diagnostic and Imaging Center to improve accessibility to advanced laboratory radio diagnostic investigations. His Excellency, Yaya Bello, believes that a healthy population is a wealthy population. If he can revitalize Kogi State health sector, he will do so much better when given the opportunity as the president. Support Governor Yaya Bello for president. Courtesy, Directorate of Media and Publicity, Yaya Bello Presidential Campaign Organization. And on politics, there are plans by the Lagos State Chapter of the Ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, to smuggle an aspirant into the race for Lagos West Senatorial seats after the deadline for the submission of forms and screening of aspirants. A party source who frowned at the development said, although he did not know what politics was going on in Lagos, some of the national executives of the party were disappointed at the desperation by the party leadership in the state to smuggle a yet-to-be-identified aspirant into the race for Lagos West senatorial seat after deadline. According to the source, three people bought the form for Lagos West Senatorial District, but two returned their forms and were screened by the party. Not worried, however, why the third person refused to turn in her form. The three candidates are the senior special assistant to President Muhammad Buhari on Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. Ade Jokero Lepe Adefulire, former Nigerian High Commissioner to Ghana, Musili Obanikoro and Akim Opeifa. But while Obanikoro and Opeifa returned their form, Ore Lepe Adefulire did not and waited till the deadline for submission closed and screening done for the two others. Aspirants contesting to represent their constituency at the Kogi State House of Assembly under the platform of the All Progressive Congress, APC, have been screened by the screening committee of the party. The screening exercise which took place at the APC Secretariat Lokoja had aspirants from across the three senatorial districts in attendance. In an interview with some aspirants from Kogi Central, Jibril Abu, popularly called Wisdom Bank, Ajakuta, Otaiti, Emenifo, Gori Magongo, Prince Otokiti Al Hassan Zakaria, Okehi, and Issa Alberto Meza for Adavis constituencies, all commended the committee for a job well done and promised to represent the people well if elected. Uh, I believe we should all go back to the constituency, talk to our delegates, continue to meet with our people, and after all, when the election comes, we should all be prepared for Sunday. On what I said last week, strictly legislative business, dividends for all. That will bring promotion to the Kehi people, Kogi State, and Nigeria at large. Ajakuda people have not really been enjoying fruitful and uh, quality representation. Um, what we are promising to bring on board is nothing less 
than a quality representation. Um, like you said, Wisdom Bank has become a household name. We are not there because we want to go and promote Togri. It was seamless, it was very fast. The officials were professional and they asked for all the necessary and relevant documents. There was no waste of time, no idle time. I'm very satisfied with it. Representation of the people is the reason why we are going into this contest. The people need to be properly represented. Their issues need to be properly presented to the government. It needs to be well articulated. And the people themselves have to support and make sure that um, they are, they are, they are their candidates, their representatives are properly supported by them. They say a tree doesn't make a, a single tree doesn't make a forest. As long as they stand behind their representatives, then we are going to be able to stand for them. God willing, when we win, we're going to be able to give them the necessary um, dividends of democracy. A female aspirant, MEC or Charlotte of the Western Senatorial District, aspiring to represent the people of the Abba West State constituency, promises to provide basic social amenities to the people of the constituency. We lack um, good roads. Um, you don't go now. We lack good roads. We lack um, our most of our schools are gone, and then police stations. Yes, security. The former chief medical director, Kogi State Specialist Hospital, Lokoja, Dr. Ahmed Atta, Ola Moboru, Adoko Emmanuel, Ampa One, and Major Enefola, Igamela, Odolu State constituencies, all affirmed their readiness to provide people centered representation to the people of their various constituencies. The strengthening of the party, the support of the government of the day, His Excellency Elijah Abelo, and of course, uh, the President Mohamed Bouari, uh, to continue to give the dividends of democracy to them. And um, we will be there to uh, pray to God for the opportunity for us to uh, serve our people in due course. I cannot just sit idly by and watch. I must have to contribute my quota in doing whatever possible I can do to bring about a change, to bring a radical improvement in the conditions, the green conditions of our people, particularly in Nigeria, the Nigerian local government and the state, Kogi state in general. My people, when you talk about borehole, solar street lights, ICT center, every Ibajima know where you say much, they know who is he. I'm a project manager. I'm a developer, so I don't need anything that when I get there, I'll start thinking of what to do. I've started my long before now, and the only thing I can do, getting there is to do more. That is the only thing I can do, and I need, but you know that, yeah, they have a representative. I will present the group for the clear body adequately. I'll give them adequate information. I'll make sure I put my constituency in the good map in jail. I will carry everybody along, and I will introduce something like a youth empowerment. You understand to empower my people in the area of many things. We'll go on a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. And on crime. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has arrested the Accountant General of the Federation, AGF, Ahmed Idris, over an 80 billion naira fraud. EFCC spokesman Wilson Owajura confirmed his arrest in a statement issued on Monday evening. He said Idris was arrested after failing to honor the Commission's invitations to respond to issues connected to the Fraudulent Act. The Commission's verified intelligence showed that the AGF raked off the funds through bogus consultancy and other illegal activities activities using projects, family members and close associates. According to the FCC, the funds were laundered via real estate investments in Kanu and Abuja. Amina Mohammed, the United Nations Deputy Secretary General, has called for justice following the killing of Deborah Yakubu in Sokoto over blasphemy. Mohammed spoke out via her official Twitter page on Tuesday, stating that religions should not be misinterpreted to preach violence. Yakubu, a second-year student of the Shehu Shagari College of Education, Sokoto, was lynched on the school premises on Thursday after classmates accused her of blasphemy. On Monday, the Sokoto Police Command arrayed two suspects, Bilyaminu Aliu and Aminu Hukunsi, before a chief magistrate court in the state for their alleged participation in the crime. The suspects pleaded not guilty to the charges, while the defense counsel, Professor Mansour Ibrahim, applied for their bail on liberal terms, citing constitutional provisions and section of the Administration of Criminal Justice Law. The trial judge reserved the ruling on the bail application and ordered the accused to be remanded at a correctional center. Now on
from foreign. Morocco and Spain have reopened the land borders between the North African country and the Spanish enclave of Cueta and Milala two years after they were shut due to COVID restrictions and a major diplomatic role. The enclaves on the Mediterranean coast in northern Morocco have the European Union only land borders with Africa. The gates opened shortly after 11 p.m. local time on Monday night, letting dozens of cars and queues of pedestrians pass in both directions. At the Fnidec border post, smiles lit up the faces of travelers crossing to see their families on the Moroccan side. The reopening of the borders of the two enclaves initially remains limited to residents of Europe's open borders, Chigen area, and their family members. It will be expanded to cross-border workers after May 31. The local economies on both sides of the borders depend on the crossing of people and goods. The Kuwaita and Melala crossings were closed during the first wave of the coronavirus pandemic in May 2020. Maritime travel between the two countries resumed on April 12. Following their reconciliation, Morocco and Spain have committed to strengthening cooperation on irregular migration. Let's join John and Mali for our sports update. Sports orbit in an effort to land Nigeria international Victor Simen, English Premier League giants Manchester United are ready to offer the striker a deal believed to be around 60.6 .6 million naira weekly deal. Osimen has been a subject of multiple transfer reports, having been linked with several top Premier League sides. Liverpool, Arsenal, Manchester United and Newcastle United are all vying for his signature following his impressive form in the season in the Italian Serie A with Napoli. The striker joined Napoli in the summer of 2020 for 80 million euros with add-ons and has a contract with the Napoli-based club until 2025. The 23-year-old has since become a key figure at the club and is currently the club's leading goal scorer with 18 goals in 31 appearances so far this season. The Parthenopians rejected Manchester United's first offer for Osimhen, but now the Red Devils are looking forward to offer Anthony Martial in the swap deal as the bid to rebuild the team following another poor season. According to Gazeta Delo Sport, United are reportedly hopeful of securing a signing with talks already on the way. The website claimed Osimhen could agree a five-year deal worth £146,000 a week. That is more than double the money he currently earns at Napoli. And that's sports update on MLC TV News. I am Malik Jonah reporting. Back to Acosta for more stories. for the update joiner and that was the size of our package today join us tomorrow at this same hour to watch our news as we give you updates on happenings within and across the globe don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel malachi tv like and follow our facebook page mlc tv instagram mlc tv 2021 twitter at mlc tv one for your event coverage information contribution advert and sponsorship please call any of our numbers displayed on the screen join us friday and saturday to watch our special programs friday 9 p.m local government and you saturday 7 p.m family affairs 9 p.m political arena women's world sunday by 6 p.m Malakai TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. I am Sharifat Onunu Mohammed. Please continue to be a brother's keeper to build a united and peaceful society together. Good evening and thanks for watching. <music>